Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me okay? Sorry about the late start today. I've had a series of technical difficulties. Thank you for coming. Let me put my glasses on so I don't go uh, blind again. Happy New Year to everyone. I appreciate all of you, and um, I'm grateful that you're here participating this afternoon. And uh, it really is quite an honor to, 13 years now, have an opportunity to share what we've learned with you and kind of promote a new idea. For the last 13 years, we've helped close to 4,000 customers now in futures, forex, equities, and crypto, a bunch of options traders in there. We've helped them figure out that most of the stuff that people are using is, let's just say, not the most efficient way of getting to a profitable trade. You end up sitting in front of the computer all day, over trading, moving your stops, shaving your targets, and not feeling very good about yourself at the end of the session. And so to sort of help you believe that what we're telling you is true. I'm going to go through a series of steps today to help you identify some things that are happening with or without your permission or knowledge. And to help you understand that these moves are occurring in the future uh, without your knowledge or permission, I've actually given out uh, to our prospect mailing list uh, all the times for Wednesday and Thursday in advance. So on our Facebook page, on our social media groups, our email lists for people who haven't purchased, we've actually sent out the market times and directions in advance to help you see and understand that markets are not as random as the vendors want you to believe. So I want to pull back and look at a few things with you together. How many of you believe markets are random? I know there's a few new faces in here today. How many of you believe markets are random and we just sort of have to butts along and figure things out as we go and look for opportunities as they arise? Anybody? Anybody? When I grew up, today's webinar is going to be a little unconventional, just a heads up in advance. When I grew up, I grew up in a profoundly, fundamentally Christian home. And there were two prevailing schools of thought as they related to um, the universe creation and humanity's part in it. You sort of had the Calvinists. How many of you are familiar with this? I'm going to go a little off script today. And the Wesleyans. I think I'm spelling that correctly. And in essence, there were and there are two groups of people and the debate essentially boils down to a neo in the matrix idea of things sort of being predestined as opposed to free will anything can happen is anyone familiar with those two school those two schools of thought those two groups uh, in the Christian faith? No. Well, when we come and look at markets, uh, I'm tending to lean more and more and more on the predestined side of things. And I wanted to share a few things with you um, regarding that. And this wasn't supposed to be a theology lesson, but I think trading and metaphysics and, and all of these things 
tend to overlap a little bit when we get down into the into the the trenches of it all so let me start here this is the s p 500 e-mini the futures version of it the largest stock market in the known world and what i want to ask you and there's no no tricks here there's no cards up my sleeve i, I want to ask you sort of very simply and straightforwardly what tends to happen to the largest stock market in the world the price of that market when we arrive at a day that is denoted by a red dot and i'm going to tell you what these dots mean but first i want you to answer that question what tends to happen to the price of the e-mini s p when we get near those red dots no credit cards will be swiped or charged we're just sort of sitting here in pursuit of the truth. Would you say that it goes up, goes down, or nothing really happens of significance? Michael, it's sort of a mishmash. Nothing really is happening. Does price end up lower in the future, higher in the future, or unchanged? Okay, I've got about a dozen answers in here. Everyone's saying down. Okay. So... Let's just put the word down there for now. Consensus is down. <clears throat> and some of you have seen this exercise before, but I think it bears repeating. I do. I really think it does. And then conversely, I'm not going to waste your time and, and go through that exercise again, but I think that we would corporately agree in or around the green dot times price tends to rise into the next selling pressure signal right when we get near these green times the most part for the most part there's a surge in energy upwards okay and so we can use that word up well this study believe it or not is based on something that is out of this world and i've made numerous posts on different social media forums in the past about how the green dots on this chart are actually related to full moon signals and how the red dots are related to new moon signals a new moon of course meaning that the light from the sun reflecting off the surface of the moon is completely dark at night when you look outside and so there's a a relatively horrifying realization when you look at a chart like this there's actually two the first realization is that there's some type of force influencing or a highly correlated event, but some kind of force preliminarily correlated um, between when the moon is full in price and when the moon is empty in price. And so if we just look through here for the lowest hanging fruit and we draw arrows at the times where sort of an obvious high or low has come in, we see that well over half of the time these celestial events are marking very specific movements 
in the market. Now that, to me, originally is sort of horrifying because I want to know why that thing is happening. We're off one day on that signal right there. This one sort of fails right here. This one is late by a couple days. We'll put an X right there. And there's a little turn here, but not really. So well over half the time, a celestial event is influencing the behavior of a market down here on terra firma. It's weird. It's really, really weird. And so there are other parts of this that become even weirder. For example, if we tell the software to put a support or resistance line on each of the closing prices of these lunar dates, something really interesting happens. We'll limit it to the last 180 days of signals. Let's get rid of all of our drawings. Can everybody see where those lines are coming in? They're actually the closing prices of these lunar dates. We'll load a few more days. Get a few more lines. There we go. So on the closing price of this day, we have a line extending forward into the future. On the closing price of this lunar day, we have a line extending forward into the future. Now, Obeyed, check this out. As we start to go down in the time frames, who notices what's kind of happening at those lunar lines on the smaller time frames? Anybody? As we go back and forth on an hourly time frame, it appears that the lunar lines are forming highs and lows at these support and resistance levels. And then as we go down to a 15 minute time frame, Obey, do you see how it starts to become even more obvious that something weirder is happening around those support and resistance levels? It's kind of bananas, right? And then using a simple technique, we can actually, where there's a large gap, begin to separate those lines into half. And can you guys see what starts to happen at the halfway points where those 50% lines are kicking in? And then we can take similarly large gaps and then obey. You see how I pulled that 50% right there? Let's get it right so we're not messing it up. And now notice, gentlemen, what happens along this line, along the way. And the smaller the time frame, the more of these lines we have to work with. And just using the same technique, we can subdivide those gaps and now obey it on the 15, on the five minute chart. Can you see where the highs and lows are hitting those lines? We've got almost uh, a ladder effect going on where there's this resonant frequency, if you will, of support and resistance. And all of these support and resistance levels are based on what? The size of the moon in the sky. 
And all we're doing is using that as a reference point, a datum, and then following a very simple procedure. And now all of a sudden we sort of know the areas to watch for support and resistance. So the guy who first figured this all out was a quirky dude. No one really believed him when he was telling uh, people the things that I'm telling you, but he believed in something called natural law. And he said, if you study these types of things, you'll learn why tops and bottoms are found at certain times. He said, when you've identified those times, you'll see why tops and bottoms form around the resistance levels of the times. This is a 150-year-old concept. And so now, with this chart, we have a pretty good idea where bounces are going to occur along the way today, right? We can even extend our lines all the way down. Everybody with me so far? So in a few short minutes, we were able to identify where the highs and lows of the market were likely to come in, right? Let me get rid of our drawings. We could look at those signals on a, on a much smaller time frame. Here's a 60 instead of a daily. And have a feel for what the overall trend of the market will be from the new moon to the full moon. And then have an understanding of when those pulls up should start. And then we know sort of what levels to watch for the bounces and we can understand why there was tremendous support here at 38.26 for multiple one hour attacks and how it got all the way back up to 38.42. And as it closes above each one of these lines, we have an idea where it's headed next based on the size of the moon and the sky. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. And it's it's actually something very easy that anyone can harness and reference. The dates of these events are online. You can look them up years into the future. And you can draw those things on your own chart if you elected to work on your own. That's the first thing I wanted to show you with regards to predestination. The second thing I wanted to show you was this chart. And so the next chart that I want to show you is one that I published on the website on Tuesday evening for people who don't own the software yet. And this was essentially warning us about movements intraday. So think along the same vein, the same lines of the lunar stuff we were looking at, which is admittedly weird. And think of it in terms of that predictive element. We know when the moon will be full and new for the next 100 years. But on Tuesday, the software was warning us about all these cell times. Think of them like new moons. And then the software was warning us about all these times, which were buying pressure times. And Instead of referencing the size of the big hunk of cheese in the sky, it was referencing historical institutional behavior patterns. So the market has been consistently driven up at these times and down at these times over the course of the last several weeks. It's left a trail behind. The banks have left a trail behind. So let's take a look at an E-mini S&P five-minute chart. 
and see what actually happened at those times. So we'll open a five minute chart today. And with 30 days of historical data. In the past, we would try to trade this with a number of different techniques. We would use moving averages and volume. We would reference order flow. We would sign up for some trading service or some uh, black box algorithm. We would follow a guru, get in some discord room and listen to someone who was hot at the time until they weren't hot and then we would lose money usually all the money we made with them and more and so we don't do that anymore what would happen instead if we took the times that we gave out on tuesday and overlaid them on top of what we once thought was a random free will market that could do anything it wanted any time of the day. What would that look like? Well, it would look like this. And it would bear a strong resemblance to our lunar chart. A strong resemblance in that when we were waiting for a selling pressure signal at 830, we got one and the market moved down. When we were waiting for a buying pressure signal at 1025, the market didn't go down. It went up at first, it came down, and then it went right back up to the line that it started at. And then at 1155, think of it like a mini new moon, the market dropped down into 120. And then at 120, the market ratchets right back up, rockets into the moving average. Now, what makes this more exciting for me, and in some ways disappointing and disheartening for me, is that I join groups on Facebook to try to uh, educate people teach them about what's going on and how this is working. And so earlier this morning in a group full of about 8,000, 7,000 E-mini S&P traders, I posted this image and I said, hey, these are the times that are coming up, specifically what I wrote today. I will be watching after 120 to see what's up though. As of right now, they didn't do much selling at 11.55, signaling a shift to buying. If we're above 38.29 by 120, that's a strong signal. They're done selling for now. And I left that time hanging out on the front side of the chart in front of 8,000 skeptics. And I warned them and I said, we're just going up and down and up and down and up and down. That means they're probably done selling. And I'm expecting it to pop up at 120. Now think how ludicrous that sounds. I could pick any time. Why not 125, why not 150, why not 12.45 or 12.55 12, uh, or one o'clock even. It's a very weird time to make a prediction. It's also strange to predict a direction. And so I, I feel wonderful about these posts. I think surely we will save these people from themselves will help people that are struggling. And lo and behold, hours later, the very next post, you can see what happens at 120. Now remember, this signal has been in the public forum now for two days, Tuesday night, Wednesday, all through Thursday. And watch what happens. The market drops down. It puts in what's essentially a doji pattern. And then Dave, look, goes from 38.25 to 
back up to the moving average, 38.45. That's a 20 point move. It's $1,000 per contract. And if you had your risk just under the low, it's about $100 worth of risk for $1,000 worth of reward at a time where more than 50% of the time it's going to be at or within one bar of the exact high or low. How are we able to do this? And here's the most disappointing part of it. There are 7,000 people monitoring the page. And what kind of reaction do I get? I got three likes. And two of them are from existing customers. Nobody asks questions. Nobody follows through. People are happy in the dungeons of their own trading creation. They want to believe the market is random. They want to believe their news feeds and their forums and their indicators will save them. And the market gets to these times and it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. The moon rises, the moon sets. Any questions about that? Any questions about that? Okay, great. So one of the things I want to take a look at with everybody while we're here before we drill down a little deeper. Sunrise, sunset. Sunrise, sunset. Boom. Get rid of the drawing tools on here. Oh, the drawing is circle. Sorry. Boom. We'll get rid of it like that. All right. Let's take a look at the daily chart. And now I want to bring you into another layer of what we do here. When GAN is first looking at these things that you and I are looking at nearly two centuries later, he's pretty excited about what he found. And I want to share this quote with you. Stocks, like atoms, are really centers of energy. Therefore, they are controlled mathematically. So right away, the first thing that I come away from this quote thinking is great math. Ugh, I hate math. Right? But I want to show you that there's actual power in this to make money. Let's really drill down on this quote. Stocks are really centers of energy. Therefore, they are controlled mathematically. Steve, my settings are 71400 with a swing strength of 8. 678. 71400 swing strength 8 with a calendar day as opposed to trading day. 71400 swing strength 8. So there's this really cool thing when we start referencing markets like mathematical systems. Yep. Number one, in your handout section, there's a book that I created about six years ago. And I started to notice that there were different patterns in the market as they related to time. There were different patterns in the market as they related to time. So, for example, let's come back over here and use our daily signal. And I want to show you something real quick. Is this okay that I'm looking at the moon stuff or have I confused too many people? I figure we'd start the year off uh, a little unconventionally. Sometimes people see this and they go, ah, I can't take it. All right, let's get um, 
just the full and the new. We'll get rid of the quarters. Okay, let me show you something really cool. Can everybody see on my chart right here where the full moon occurs at a brand new high? And Dave, when it occurs at the brand new high, it doesn't go up anymore. It reverses and goes down. Well, with regards to the mathematics of markets, you start to find patterns. How many of you remember what a negative times another negative number equals? Negative one times negative one equals a positive, right? The polarity flips when you bring the two things together. Well, inside of stocks, when we reference the math of these signals, we see that same thing occur. So for example, if you arrive at a higher high structurally in a market at a buying pressure time, where either the candle to the left or the candle to the right or the signal candle itself is a higher high, any one of those three candles will inherit a reverse polarity signal. Positive times uh, a negative times a negative is a positive. So in this example, can you guys see how that's the prior swing high? We move up, we move up, we move up. Candle number one is a higher high. Candle number two is a higher high. And now, this is understood to be a reversal signal. Do you guys at least see that mechanically? We can define that signal as something that will flip and go backwards using the book that's in your handout section. And similarly, there are moments, especially after crashes. Let me see if I can find one. Here it is. There are moments when we arrive at a brand new low and the signal candle is a brand new low. You see it right there? This is a moon day, right? A lunar day. And what happens when we usually get to a brand new low on a selling signal, a double negative? So brand new low plus selling signal equals up for a time. And so can everyone see the similarity here, the mathematics of markets, how this tends to go up and then right on the new moon day, it reverses and goes up at first. Kind of cool, right? We can mechanically define it with no discretion and say when this and this, then this, like a line of code in a computer program. And Gann didn't know this. He didn't understand it. Many of his contemporaries didn't understand it. People um, who came after him, Wells Wilder with the market delta phenomenon, for example, completely missed this. And so when you observe those patterns over and over again, again, this is a six-year-old book, Obeyed and Dave, you'll see that we actually start to learn how to trade them. A pattern four tends to reverse, go up, and then drop down at some point back again. In fact, coincidentally, you'll see the pattern four actually looks like an upside down number four. This webinar is usually posted right after in the evening on our YouTube channel, correct? So in the book, it even tells us how to trade it. Hey, when there's a pattern four, mark the low of the signal. Wait for that wave to come in. And when it comes back and punctures the low, put your stop above the puncture candle, sell it short right there. Now remember, this signal is based on the size of the moon in the sky. But the pattern 
is a mathematical definition. When A happens and B happens, then we are expecting C. And so now when we look at this chart, things are less, uh, are clearer than they were. We can come here and put a green arrow and we can say, hey, that's clearly a pattern number four. So I'm showing you that because those rules start to come in handy. The patterns are one of the mathematical rules that we can reference. One of the other techniques that I've demonstrated in this webinar involves another rule that we learned about three years ago. I can take any two gaps of time and I can split them into thirds, meaning if there's a selling pressure time here and a buying pressure time here, I can cut that time and split it into 33.33 and 66.66%. And Steve, the only thing I have to do <laughs> is preserve the oscillation. So if this, <coughs> if this is positive, this signal is going to be negative. If this is negative, obeyed, the next signal is going to be closest to the line, negative. So now I can take any two stretches of time and I can subdivide those cycles into thirds. Oops. Does that make sense? Now, why am I showing you this? I'm showing you on something crazy like the lunar cycles because we're going to take it and apply it to the actual software here in a second. Now, Obey, check this out. If I split this sequence into thirds, that's a green line, right? Now, Raja, watch. I can take the same rule that we learned earlier and say, hey, what happens when we land on a buying pressure signal that's a brand new structural high? Obeyed, what can I put on top of that candle? Pattern five, bingo. Okay, that's important. You're starting to get it. I'm just applying mathematical rules to the system. And now look at it here. We have a pullback, a, a drop down, a pull up. And now Raja, watch. The candle that's closest to the red line is below the prior swing low of that candle. Huh. Well, we learned about that a few minutes ago. When that happens, the candle that's below the swing low gets what? A green arrow, because the negative times the negative is a positive. New low red line equals pattern four. So here, we've applied two mathematical rules to a system. And when we have that system, now we can come in and backfill all these other signals that didn't look right at first. That green line right here didn't look right. And now we know it's a five and it did what fives do. And now when we look at what the market was doing at these signals, now it lines up better than 50% because we've learned all these new signals, right? So when I show you that, I want to bring you back to the Time Warp software. Many of you are Warp customers. And we're going to start to overlay some of the rules that we've learned using what we've done. Only the cool part is with our advanced software, we can actually tell the software to tell us when those signals are occurring. So now over here, we have a pattern four on October 14th. 
You see that? Then we have a pattern five on November 16th. So the warp software, the program that we're looking at that most customers purchase, you know, what is it? 98% of everyone that's a customer here gets a time software like warp. So we can take that software now and we can use these mathematical rules to find alternate signals. So for example, obeyed, is it okay if I put a red line here and a green line there? Yeah. I can take the next sequence, which is a pretty large sequence. And now I know that this is a pattern five, right here. And so all of the rules that work on a metaphysical chart, like the lunar signals, apply to the historical mathematical models that we've built in the time warp software, right? So on this signal, that's a pattern four. And we can actually predict with some certainty what the markets will do as we arrive at these times. We can split the next large gap into smaller waves. And the only one that didn't work was this one. It was off by one day from that low. And then in the webinar prior, I told you to look out for the fall on December 13th, and I warned you it would stop on December 27th. The next wave or the next time we have to evaluate is January 9th. So is there any real difference from our five minute predictions to our daily predictions? The software is essentially laying out the opportunities. So when you load warp on a daily chart, Luke, the most important thing is you have to load at least 10 years of data load 3,650 days on your chart. And if you're loading it with your NinjaTrader, you wanna make sure if you can to have your kinetic end of D, end of day signals. Randall, I'm using the FIB extension tool. And so when I come in here, I've set my Fibonacci time extension tool to have those levels as default, 33.33 green, 100 is green, zero is red, and 66.66 .66 is red. I've saved those things as default with my FIB extension. And that's a way for me to manipulate my charts and see more entries and understand what's happening in between, right? Now, this also works on the big boys, markets like Apple. And I warned everyone before we signed off for the vacation that the drop in Apple was coming on December 13th and that the drop was coming on November 18th until November 28th and that the bottom was in on October 13th. There's our infamous pattern four too, right around the same price. And so it seems like everyone's very surprised online in the forums, on the news feeds that Apple is dropping and dropping and dropping. That's what it feels like. And so I can come here and I can say, well, what are the mathematics of it? Well, when we get to this day, the market will go into uh, profit taking. And everybody see that little range right here? That's the range. <clears throat> and if we go back and look at 150 year old analysis, that's what's happening right here, right now. When we know the times, we can apply the correct tools. There's the leg down. 
There's the leg down. Here's the redistribution phase. That's what's happening right here, and that's the range. And then the next drop is coming on this leg right here. What do you guys think of that? It's pretty neat, isn't it? So the Wesleyans versus the Calvinists, it seems like in the trading community, we're still having that argument. Is the market random or is it moving under its own free will? There's an element of, I'm sorry, is it free and moving according to these sort of random things or is it sort of predestined to go to these times and move and go to these directions and move because i'm honestly not the smartest kid in the class and i come here and and mention these things and they keep happening and so it seems too good to be true but obeyed look there's the split on the most valuable company in the world, right? So that's a great example of one of the ways the, the software works. Now, we could look at a, uh, a whole host of other things. Let's see if this thing loads up right here. I wanted to show you something else to give you a sense of the longer term ramifications of this. We made a couple products on our website. I'm excited about this year because I think there's something for everybody. And the program that we're talking about here today is called Warp. It's sort of the generic do-it-all time predictive program for futures, forex, equities, uh, and so on. And it's good at giving us the times and directions in advance. And then we created a plugin for Warp called Aurora. And Aurora was for the customer who wanted to sort of go to the next level and see actual entries and exits on the screen back test things, look at different settings. And we're currently working with a group of 20 of our closest customers with a version of Aurora called Optimus that's automatically trading the Warp and Aurora signals. So Warp, Aurora, Optimus, and then over here is a program called Force where I basically teach people the most accurate method of predicting the markets uh, that I know of, basically the ultimate incarnation of GAN's teachings. But the nice part about the Warp family is we can sort of build on it and go deeper and deeper into it to feel out how effective these time signals are. So, for example, Right now, I have the E-mini S&P three-minute signal on our chart. And one of the things that I've done is I've asked it to backtest a setup. Now, there's a difference between the signals and the setups. Yeah, we can look at the pound dollar in a second, sure. And so right now, what that plugin is doing is it's referencing one specific setup. I'm telling it, hey, when we get to a signal in the direction of the trend, a buying signal when the moving average is going up, in this case, the moving average is a 120 EMA. I want you to look for that as a buy signal. Your stop will be one and a half average true range values away. You can make it tighter or farther away if you want. 1.5 seems to work out really well. And we're gonna exit at the next signal. So we enter at a signal in the direction of the trend. We exit by the counter trend signal. 
and our stop is one and a half ATR values away. Enter, exit, enter, exit. Believing that this window in time is relevant. If the software has a blue dot out there in the future, or a blue line down here out in the future, that should probably be the least we hold on to that trade in the direction of the trend because there's a historical pattern there. So we know these times in the future. Okay. So on my chart now, you'll see with Aurora, we actually have these entry and exit signals. And at 9.30 this morning, you'll see there's a big fat red line right here. So obeyed with Aurora, it's warning us, hey, this is an entry with trend. This is a signal with trend. And now the nice part about Aurora is in the lower left corner, it's telling us what the efficacy of the signal is over the period of time that we've loaded the data. And so here, in this particular example, I want to show you what I think is pretty incredible about it. We're only looking for signals with this plugin between 9.30 and 9.45. That's 15 minutes a day. So Obeyed, Aurora is plugged into a warp and we're checking one signal a day. So if we have a buy signal or a sell signal in that 15 minute window, it's testing it. And then I want you to see how much data is loaded. Can everyone see how much data we've loaded into the plugin? Some of you are real testing nerds like me and you appreciate the resolution this gives me. So between 9.30 and 9.45, over one year of signals, the software came back and it said, hey, funny thing, the buy dots were 64% of the time profitable with a net of 330 ticks, uh, hypothetically, and the sell dots were 75% more or less profitable with a tick profitability of 488. And then we get this equity curve over here. And we'll save it as ES3 minute 15. And I can open an Excel sheet, right? Because it's fun if it works one day in a row for the webinar or two days in a row for the webinar, which it usually does. But what's its efficacy long-term potentially? So we'll come in here and we'll grab that file. It's a comma delimited, comma delimited file. Now all that data from the year is in there. So you can see January 6, 2022 to today. We hit zero. Now we're gonna add up all the ticks cumulatively over the last year for a 15 minute a day setup. And when I insert the graph, Obeyed, gentlemen, ladies at home, ES three minute, <coughs> 15 minutes a day, one year. That's one trade a day using a predictive signal based on the same principles that make the markets go up and down around these predictive times that we've demonstrated with the forecasts on the web page, and the same principles that make the markets go up and down around these lunar phases. The predestination, if you will, we've sort of dialed into it. So that's over 800 ticks. 800 ticks, 15 minutes a day, times 1250. 
is $10,000. Let's take 85% of that with slippage and commission, right? So it's a little over $8,000 trading one signal a day using a predictive signal, which is kind of bananas. Wouldn't you agree that that's sort of a bananas signal approach? Well, how do most traders trade? They use a lagging signal, they move their stops, they move their targets, they bounce from system to system, they hop from one guru to the next. <sighs> There's no consistency. There's no consistency. And so most traders, um, self-proclaimed traders, are sort of doomed before they ever start. And we look at a chart like this and go, hey, it seems like uh, I have a pretty good idea, a pretty good understanding of what the markets will do in the future, right? So yeah, let's take a look at the pound dollar. New chart, GBP USD, well, I had an extra letter up there. And I'll show you what I do. We'll load, um, obeyed, what time frame are we looking at? You want to go back to the daily or the, I sent you the chart from the 60 that you asked about earlier. Yeah. The 60 minute, we'll load 90 days. And we'll use the default software. 71400 swing strength eight. And here we go. Okay, so quick look backwards, quick look forwards. Here we are. And now we can apply those same techniques. So here are the signals on the chart. And obeyed, let's just look at some of the same mathematical things that carry over, right? So I can take the white signal here and the blue signal here, and I can split it into thirds. And now obeyed right here. I can put a red line. And over here waiting for me in the future is a green line. I can take that same thing, copy paste it, swing it back over in the other direction. And I see that these two candles were higher high, positive, positive, positive is a negative. And that's a pattern five. And then obeyed, here's the prior swing low. Negative lower low plus a lower low equals a pattern four on candles here and here. This candle was closest to the line, so we give that there and it's marked as a four. So can you see how the two techniques together are working? I can apply the same math from the daily on the lunar to the daily on the S&P to the 60 on the pound dollar. I'm updating my book. By the way, there are two patterns that are not in there yet um, that we've been testing for the better part of a year. One is called a pattern eight. One is called a pattern nine. For example, over the last 13 years, we've noticed this. Check this out. When you have a buying pressure signal, and you have either three consecutive higher closes or three consecutive higher highs in relation to a fourth candle with no swings to reference. So obeyed, if it goes like this, boom, 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 the fourth candle is usually red, not necessarily. 
and either you have three higher highs or and or three higher closes pattern nine which is a double negative and so obey look at the signal at 10 o'clock right here there's the line higher high higher close higher high higher close higher high higher close in relation to a fourth candle when we have that condition it gets the same treatment that a pattern five gets does that make sense okay the same thing is true in reverse if we have three consecutive lower lows and or lower closes in relation to a fourth candle that's a pattern nine wait did i do it right eight pattern eight pattern eight and we treat it the same way as a pattern five so the mathematical conditions for that are three lower lows or lower closes in relation to a fourth candle so now go back and look at the 60 minute chart with me this is a pattern nine now if i look to the left in terms of the prior swing low this is a pattern four and this is a pattern four on the 3 a.m signal and everything else looks good <clears throat> so that's the pound dollar on a 60 minute chart and just like the daily on the es about half the time those signals are exact highs and lows sometimes a little bit more and when you jump up to the higher time frame all the same rules kick in let's get rid of our drawing tools this is the pound dollar on a daily with the same settings um, what kills me about this one obeyed is we're one candle away actually this is a pattern seven not seven uh six and on this line obeyed look candle number four higher high higher high higher high which is a candle pattern number nine and now the candle signal on september 28th if you go back and look in your book it's called a pattern six and the software would show it i just like drawing it by hand you see that signal from six years ago brother when we have a brand new low and the selling pressure signal is engulfed the candle of the selling pressure signal is engulfed completely engulfed by the brand new low which is this guy here then it reverses and moves back up towards the moving average so the signal on the 28th is completely engulfed by the brand new low and so we would give it pattern number six check that out that's pretty cool right guys there's this language in time that banks are following And then we can come in here. I'm not sure what it'll it'll give us. And then obey the next push up is here at the split. And then the next selling pressure signal, the line that's closest to the candle is there. And then we can take that same thing, copy and paste it over when we have a big move like that. This was when we were expecting selling. And then obeyed this is a pattern five right brand new high 
green, green, double positive is a negative. Pattern five, which usually signifies the end of a run, the extreme of a move. And now the next drop down appears to be January 16th. January 16th. Any questions about that? Pound dollar on a daily chart. Any other markets you want to look at real quick? We can do the same thing. <clears throat> it works on everything. You can absolutely use a higher time frame for a lower time frame for sure. Steven says five minutes, same chart. Sure. Same thing. Steven, see the 155 signal, higher high, positive, positive is a negative. There's your five minute chart. Candle number one is not a higher high, but candle number candle number two is not a higher high. Candle number three is a higher high. That's a pattern five. We have a lower low at 835 and 840. When we get a pound dollar signal with a pattern four like this, we mark the low candle per the book. How do we trade a pattern four? Just right here. We put um, an entry just below the candle that was the lowest low. We see that first little pullback, Stephen, right here. And now we sell it short at 855. We put a stop right above that candle. So we're short here until that signal. We're short here until this signal. And if you sold it here, when it crossed back over the moving average from the pattern five, we would have been short from here to here. And then on the nine, five been short from here to here, short from 250 to 325. 110, we would have been short and stopped out. And then 1125, we would have been short for a loss. So net positive on the day. And as you go back in time, Stephen, the same signals are working over and over and over again in the overnight, in the Asian session, in the US session. It's all the same stuff. Buy from here to here. Buy from here to here. Small stop out. Buy from here to here. Break even. Any other markets you guys want to take a peek at? Take a peeky pokey at? Anybody have any options that they're trading? You want to take a look at any of the other markets like Tesla? Any idea when the Tesla bloodbath will stop? A pretty good idea. Obey, do you see that signal right there at the split? We are in a distribution redistribution phase. The market will range from here to here until we get to 110. On January 10, if that signal is a brand new low, it may be a pattern for reverse and go right back up. Well, the bloodbath's not over. It's happening the way it's supposed to happen, right? And Obey, this is a pattern five right here. So, Well, Raja, what I'm what I'm anticipating seeing this, and this is just me based on the charts kind of speaking to me a little bit. I anticipate us kind of being here. And then Raja, as we get into this moving lower, which would make it a pattern four. I have a feeling we're moving into a pattern four. The way banks usually operate is they trip stops out. 
So here's my prediction, just based on my noggin, which isn't software, it's my noggin. Raja, you see that low here, how it's close to the $100 mark? I think we'll we'll dink around here a little bit. And then you'll see a candle that sort of looks like this. It'll push down through the low, which will trip all the short sellers. All the buyers will have their stops tripped and it'll create panic. And I want you to remember that I said pattern four potentially because when we see a pattern four at a stop run, it usually does this. And this six year old chart, Raja on a one minute NQ chart bears a striking resemblance to what I'm drawing on a Tesla daily chart. The patterns are the same. And after a while, when you watch them for a long time, it's like being married to the same woman. You know what she's gonna say when the funny commercial is over. You know what she's going to cook based on what's in the fridge, right? So I have a feeling if we don't see that, right, it could do another thing too, right? Here's being proactive. It can pull back up and then drop again. So if it's not a new low by the 10th, it's probably going to keep falling until the 24th. If it's a brand new low on or before the 9th or 10th, then it'll probably reverse and go back up. Bitcoin daily. Bazinga. There's Bitcoin on a daily chart. Bitcoin daily is in a redistribution phase, just like Tesla. The selling pressure times were 816, 1012, 1130. And the next one is um, the 9th of January as well. So these were the take profit and potentially buy again times. 8.30, 11.11, .11. and now Raja right here from 12.21 forward. Do you notice how the market is in a range? When a counter trend signal like that is in a range, I'll always reference that Wyckoff diagram. Where is it? So when I look at this, I'm seeing that we sold from here to here. We put in a lower low in relation to this price, and now we're going sideways on Bitcoin. The ninth would be the next place I'm looking for a selling pressure signal. And then the 13th after that would be the next potential place to buy. Raja, the third splits is based on a law that I developed for force. So these techniques that I'm teaching you are all force uh, rules that I'm bringing down to warp to give some of you an additional edge. Yeah. So Bitcoin is um, beholden to the same mathematical laws. After a while, you don't even need to draw the lines. Steve, you see how I can kind of pick out with my eye where the stuff is going? Here's a nice little stop run right here. Double top with a stop run. Then we could take the same mathematical rules and apply them over here. God, I missed it by one bar. That's ridiculous. Whew. What do you think of that? It's kind of weird, right? The 1012 signal also was a pattern four on candle three. Candle number one, candle number two, candle number three. Obeyed is a brand new low. 
pattern four. It seems to me like most people don't like this because it runs counter to everything they were told and taught. It seems to me it runs counter to everything they were told or thought was happening. And now they're sort of confronted with this, huh? So what you're telling me is everything I've bought in the past and learned is useless. Most of it is, yeah. <laughs> but that's how the marketing companies get you. I saw a guy today, he was responding to a Facebook ad for a trading company, and he said, how come you want all my personal information before you show me the demo? And I couldn't help but write a nice little snarky comment about it, right? I said, that's how they do it. That's how it works. Ask them to give you the times in advance, right? Here's the price of oil, by the way, on a daily chart. Can you see what the lowest price is? December 9th. <clears throat> and then, Roger, if I use the same mathematical principles, can you see where that candle is the closest one to the line if I put a red arrow right there? Everybody with me so far? I want you to I want you to walk away from today having hope. Believing that the things that I'm teaching you here are not black box proprietary guru things. They're universal things that people in power don't want you to know. Goldman Sachs doesn't want you to know this stuff. JP Morgan doesn't want you to know this stuff. And how do I know he knew it? I know he knew it because he told everybody that he was watching it. Let me show you what I mean. The guy flat out came and said this. The people controlling the finances of the world, the interest rates, right? Quantitative easing. They're not flying by the seat of their pants. They have a plan. And the plan keys into what they know about your physiological reaction to these outside forces. You're sheep. We're sheep to them. And they know if we whistle one, they whistle once, we go to the left. If they whistle twice, we go to the right. But Raja, he knew this thing I showed you about the moon. He knew these patterns that I'm showing you. And that's what's playing out on these charts. So now watch. If I come here and I use the same technique that we used on the lunar signals. Steve, watch. Ready? I'm just going to put a horizontal line extending to the right at all of the places there was a warp signal. And we'll even do it on the splits. Right? Math. Math doesn't care about your feelings. It doesn't care which market. Those are the signals on CL right now. Would everybody agree? I haven't done anything weird. All right, there we go. One, two, one, two, three, four, five signals. One, where'd that signal come from? Two, oh, I'm missing one right here. One, two, three, four, five lines. Now, Steve, ready? The horizontal lines are still there, right, bro? You see them, everybody? We'll use that one rule one more time. The rule that says we can split any two times 
over and over again into half over and over again now watch now that we're inside of this gap watch me do it watch me whip watch me nay nay here we go using the same stuff that we learned about forgive me i get a little fatigued in the evenings and afternoons now So obeyed, you can do the same thing on your GBD chart, right? So Steve, are you starting to see where the signals are bouncing off these 60 minute or daily CL signal lines? For example, would you maybe go short at 515 up here? Because you're sitting right on a resistance line? Now watch this when we bring time and price together. Is this a good place to short? Okay, now look over here. Here's how I trade with force. There's a white line, but it's below me. So Steve, what do I do? I wait for it to close above the next line right here. And now I go long when it pulls back to that level. And my target is the next line up. When I have a blue signal here at 121, what do I do? I wait for it to close underneath the level, pull back into my entry, and then my target is either the next line or the next time. If you wanna have a one-to-one -one risk, use the next line above you as a stop. If you wanna have a two-to-one risk, take the line, cut it in half again, put your stop here and your target here, but be done by then. Ten eighteen. Today, what happened? It closes above the line, it pulls back to it, I'm in. If I have a two to one stop, my stop is here, my target is here. I have to be out by 9.48. 9.48, I'm entering, why? Because there's a resistance line above me. I'm entering here, I'm short, my stop is here. It goes all the way down about Two thirds of the way to my target. If I'm not break even, I'm in profit by the time I get to 1018. You see how this works? Bringing time and price together. It's really cool. I love it. This is what I do. If you want smaller moves, go down to a one minute chart. You'll see the reactions along the lines. And now, Raj, if the lines are too far apart, what am I allowed to do mathematically? I cut them in half again and again and again. You can have a 10 tick risk, you can have a 50 tick risk, you can have a 100 tick risk. But the whole network is derived from stuff that was happening with or without your permission. What do you guys think of that? Too much information? I try to blow you away a little bit at the beginning of the year. Can I go through these trades with you right now? Yeah, sure. No, okay. All right, too much? I'll back away. <laughs> so what have we learned? What we've learned here today is that the people who run everything are, the people that run everything are aware of a different set of rules that you and I previously didn't follow or know about. You think you're playing Scrabble and they're playing Monopoly. What I want you to come away with understanding today 
is really this. I, I posited that markets are not random. And I've tried to, Randall, prove it to you, lay my argument out across three arenas. Number one, we use something as silly as the moon, a natural force, to show that the largest market in the world was somewhat predictable. Whether you believe in it or care to understand the how and why, we mutually agreed here across the 50 or so people in the room. When it's green, it goes up. When it's red, it goes down. And half of those signals are nearly exact highs or lows. Then we laid out a case for the predictive warp signals. And we gave out the times for Wednesday and Thursday in advance and said, hey, I dare you to come back and see what happens on the pound dollar, on the NASDAQ, on the Dow, on Bitcoin and Ethereum, on oil, on gold. And we find that over the course of the last uh, 13 years, 60 to 70 percent of the time, those signals are right near the highs and lows. And we can brag about it on a Facebook group and people still don't care. And then I wanted you to see the beauty of the method because once we understand it's really math, we can use things like the patterns, we can use things like the splits, right? We're back in geometry class as opposed to staring into a guru crystal ball or being subjected to the psychology of our inner demons. And instead, it's one plus one equals two, two plus two equals four. These are the signals on the screen. I can leverage them in time and direction. I can leverage them on price. And then I wanted you to see fourth, what was the expectancy over time of those signals, over a broad period of time? And then this example with just 15 minutes a day in one of these signals, we see that the model generates in a probabilistic standpoint uh, over $8,000 15 minutes a day. That's not too bad. With just one signal, we're not even looking at anything past 915. I did run a study one time. I was looking at different different 15 minute segments. I haven't updated it in a little while. But Randall, this was what was happening when we added 1130 to 1145 and 345 to four o'clock. So 45 minutes a day across six months produced 1300 ticks nearly 50% more. So if you extrapolate that out, that's 2,600 ticks a year, 45 minutes a day. So there seems to be this idea that maybe lagging indicators is the wrong way. Maybe there's a better solution, right? And so when people are looking at this for the first time, I ask them, hey, after everything I've shown you here, I tried not to make it too complicated. We're being consistent. We're not cherry picking. We're using the same rules over and over again. Is trading after seeing all of this, in your opinion, <clears throat> something we have to hack at and guess at? Or is there an underlying principle, a foundational element floating throughout markets that we can drill down into and tap into the way that Gann did, the way that Wells Wilder did, the way that all these guys did? Can you talk more about the market delta stuff with Wells Wilder? Yeah. So, for example, Gann was predicting moves, and he was freaking people out 
that were watching him. They documented his trades. Well, back in the 70s or 80s, a guy named Wells Wilder was selling a system called Market Delta. There it is. So do you guys see this chart right here? They had a book, Randall, with the signals uh, months and months out into the future, 96, 97. But none of these guys figured out what I figured out. And I don't say that with any amount of pride, maybe a little bit. But I wanted to show you something here real quick. The predictions were at the top of the screen. So, Randall, everywhere you see these rectangles were the predictions that the system he had developed predictively were predicting signals to occur. And then, Randall, all the signals down below, this is back in the 90s, right? About a hundred and uh, about a hundred years after GAN and obeyed. These were the signals that the market delta system were projecting forward, right? And people paid what was it, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars for the book? And obeyed. Check this out. Can you see the signals where everything lines up the way it's supposed to? and everything looked great, what he would do is he would put the circles where the actual reversals occurred, and he would say, look, it worked. And the problem was they didn't line up, and people started to get upset. So you can see instances like signal number 19, that one was the right way. But now right here, Luke, can you see the signal 20 right there where my cursor is? He says, well, it worked because, look, there was a reversal over here to the right. But now, Obeyed, check it out. Do you see how signal 20 was the higher high in that cluster right there? That's not where it was predicted to be. So they got close. <laughs> but what do we do? We know what to do. A positive and a positive is a negative. And so now on this chart, that's a pattern five. Hmm. And when we, we look over here, he's got a number four on that chart, right? Look at where the number four comes in, right on that candle. That's a lower low, and the candle just to the right of it is a lower low. And Gann missed it, and Wilder missed it. They didn't stare at it as long as I did. That's a pattern four. And it does exactly what pattern fours are supposed to do. It marks the low. And this one does exactly what pattern fives are supposed to do. It marks the high. So these guys were close, right? But they were missing the math. They were curve fitting. They were like third down in inches. And I developed the software program that makes it easier for you to get to that point and not have to think about it. It just displays it on the screen and goes, hey, dummy, that's a buy signal. It's a one. It's a white dot. It should go up here. And I only got three likes out of 7,000, but I'm here for those three people, right? We're going to save as many people from the matrix as we can. Knowing when the signals are coming in the future allows you to be proactive and plan. When you're reacting, you're operating off balance, you're coming from a fight or flight position, you're always going to make the wrong decision. Okay? This is the reality of the world we live in. If we had another three hours, I could tell you why I'm very, very worried about 2025 into 26. I could tell you how we predicted the COVID recession 
when the market was at an all-time high before COVID was a thing. All our YouTube videos, go back and watch them. I use weird things like solar eclipses and tell people what the market will do for the next three weeks, and it does it. It's all the same math. The universe is a beautiful, wonderfully coordinated and intricate place. You just have to know the rules. Negative times a negative equals a positive. You can split any time sequence into thirds. You can use the resistance levels of every time signal to find where the bounces will occur. Blah, 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 blah. This is the reality of our world going into 2023. And these guys are warming up, warming up the engines right now. These drops that you've seen, these are not 0809 drops yet. The 0809 drops are coming. The days where you risk five ticks to make 50, to make 500. <clears throat> if you're hunting around and rummaging around in the dark with your moving average and your zero lag, blah, 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 listening to your Discord champion, you're going to lose a ton of money this year. Our company started in the Great Recession. We were there for the flash crashes. Signals lined up every time, and it's coming again. Don't be this guy. Don't be this guy. Stop it. Be this guy in the purple. That's our customer. When the car goes, we follow right behind him. Oh, Goldman Sachs is buying at 120? Here we go. Whee! Oh, you're going to stop buying uh, at 345? I'm out. Let the juggernauts push your order into profit. Believe JP Morgan when he says he knows what he knows. Believe people when they tell you who they are. They're not lying. It's so crazy that 90% of people who watch this webinar, even though we have a 4.9 out of 5.0 trust pilot rating, don't believe it. Can't be true. It's absolutely true. I want to be part of your team. I want to help you. We are engineers here. We are not marketers. We build things to help people's lives. We want you to be a better trader. I love this job because it helps people with the hardest thing they've ever tried to do. I'll say it again. We build a tool to help people achieve the hardest thing they've ever set out to do. That's what I want for you. All right. How do you get it? Here's how you get it. Here's a promo code for you because that's what you do in webinars. You go to our website at backtothefuturetrading.com, and then you're going to get this not-so-great-looking dude looking at his charts very pensively inside of our product store. The program everyone gets and they start out with is called Warp. When you click on that button, it's going to take you to the Warp page, like Star Trek and Star Wars, Warp Speed. Inside of your GoToWebinar chat box, I've just pasted the link to that page if you want to click on it and follow along. Down at the bottom of that page is an orange button. By purchasing the software, you agree to the terms of our purchase agreement. Buy now. Go to checkout without pro training room. Click on the purchase agreement X and agree to the terms that you just read. There's a place for a promo code. W-A-R-P-O-F-F -F is the current valid one. W-A-R-P-O-F-F. -F. Whiskey Alpha Radio Papa Oscar Foxtrot Foxtrot. When you hit apply, it takes $500 off of the price. This is a lifetime license. Not Lick. It's another website. You get two computer licenses. 
There is free installation. We can install it for you. You're going to have lifetime updates, and we're probably going to discontinue that moving forward because our accountant wants us to do something different. Uh, there is a video training archive on the website that has hundreds of hours describing everything from the most basic setup and uh, implementation to advanced techniques like I'm showing you here today. You have the promo code, which takes $500 off for no reason. W-A-R-P-O-F-F -F is available uh, tonight for this webinar that we're showing you. And remember, 13 years in business, and we have a 4.9 out of 5.0 trust pilot rating. Let me show you that. If you want to review that link, these are all real customers, real customers that paid for the software. And so these are real people that have real email addresses that are not affiliated with us. They don't get money for their reviews or free coffee. These are real people who came to a webinar just like you. If you want to go through and read that, Trustpilot prevents us from posting fake reviews, and they prevent fake people from posting reviews. So this is a very expensive way for us to um, prove that what we do is real. Okay. That's available here tonight. I don't know what else I can show you to prove that the markets are not random. I thought I'd take a shot here and show you some unconventional stuff. But ultimately, this is what I want for you. I want you to come to the computer every day and feel as comfortable and confident as I do. Have a reasonable idea of what's going to happen potentially, when and in what direction. Recognize when the opposite's about to occur because of the advanced patterning in the software, and maybe even use the support and resistance levels to know where the high probability bounces will occur. All of that for a program that trades over $8,000 a year, 15 minutes a day for $19.95. Not too shabby. You could do a lot worse, and many of you have. You know who you are. I love you. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you and the community as long as we have. I want to do this as long as I'm breathing and bring you the best of what we've learned. May the wind be at your back. May the sun shine upon your handsome and beautiful faces. May the valleys rise up to meet you along your path and the mountains lay low before you as you go. We wish you peace, prosperity, health. Be kind to one another wherever you can. Be that ray of sunshine in what I anticipate to be a darkening landscape these next few months and years. I don't think we're through it yet. We've got two and a half more years to go before things start to return to normal. Be the kindness in the world you want to see. We appreciate you all. I look forward to serving you. Stay tuned for more information, more training, more webinars like this one. If they're useful, send me an email. Tell me what you liked. If you didn't like something, tell me that too. I'm getting better with criticism, or at least my therapist says so. I'll talk to you guys. Have a great evening, and welcome to our new customers.